Hi folks! We're going to continue on learning about sociological research in this lecture and we're going to do so by analyzing some additional articles that I've found out on the web. Now remember all of the information that you're learning in this lecture series relates to chapter 2 which is research methods and designs. In this particular lecture we're going to talk about how to find a hypothesis in what you're reading, we're going to talk about variables and variable relationships, meaning the relationship between independent and dependent variables. All right, so what we're going to concentrate on now is finding the hypothesis, and that's not always going to be an obvious thing to pick out from what you're reading, and it's not always going to be an easy thing to find. But I'm going to give you a little tool that will help you to be able to isolate what the hypothesis might be. Now before we do that we have to make sure we understand what a hypothesis is. A hypothesis is a tentative statement about the relationship between variables, your independent and your dependent variable. And it's really important to craft a strong hypothesis because in research your hypothesis is your starting point for measurement and it allows you to gather data and analyze data that is meaningful. Now remember, we're talking about the scientific process or the scientific method here, and when you craft that hypothesis, it gives you the ability to measure your variables. Now I know you're all familiar with the scientific process, and the hypothesis comes really at the beginning of the data collection process you know, you've already decided the topic that you want to study, and you've already done your research. You've already looked back to find out what other people have already investigated about that particular topic. So what you hope is that you can find a hypothesis or create a hypothesis that is original, that is new, that is interesting and meaningful to society. Now here's my trick for you. The easiest way to figure out what a hypothesis is, is to try and figure it out in terms of an if-then statement. A hypothesis is always an if-then statement, meaning that if this happens, then that happens, or if this is present, then this result happens. This and that, are your variables, your independent and your dependent variable. So it doesn't matter what kind of scientific research we're doing, a hypothesis is always expressed as an if-then statement. Remember that for all of your science classes. If you can figure out the if this then that statement, then you're going to be able to isolate your variables. Now remember this, a dependent variable requires action from the independent variable. And the way that I always remembered this when I first started trying to memorize the point of or the purpose of dependent and independent variables, I would always say to myself, the dependent variable depends on action from the independent variable. So if you translate that to your if-then statement, your independent variable is the if side of the equation, and your dependent variable is the then side of the equation. In other words, if this is present, then this will happen. So the dependent variable is requiring action from the independent variable. Remember, always the dependent variable requires action from the independent variable. So if this, then that. And here's an example for you. If independent, then dependent is, for example, if study time, then higher grade. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if I switch those around. If higher grade, then study time. Of course, I suppose that there may be some people, if they got a really good grade, it would make them study more, but it makes more sense and it's more reasonable to assume that if you study hard, your grade will increase. If you're struggling, reach out on the general questions discussion board or go back and review 
or email me. All right, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.